Hey friends, this message is for those of you working on crafting messages for all ages. So we're talking about communicating to families, children, adults, elders, especially in a congregational context, though this could apply to other storytelling, um, inspiring communication online. Um, how do you do that in a way that is engaging, holds attention, and actually advances whatever the lesson or insight or goal you have for that message. I'm Peter Bowden. I help leaders communicate, engage online, and grow thriving communities, especially nonprofits, congregations, and organizations that have traditionally been more local, uh, geographically based, maybe building bound. How do we adapt and thrive in today's world? So a colleague of mine asked about how to design better or more engaging messages for all ages. Um, in the context of leading messages in online worship specifically. So I've been working with children from preschoolers through teens for many, many years. I've produced content for children's television, PBS Kids, other projects, and have been doing online training for, well, years now. So here are some specific tips. I put down my top ideas on some index cards. So I'm just gonna run through these. You ready? All right, number one, and we're talking about your whether you're offering a worship service and a message in it live streaming, or it's something that's pre-recorded, all this applies. First, you are talking to live people. Now, even if you are pre-recording your content, if people are gonna watch it on replay later, you have to communicate as if you're talking to children and others, as if they're live with you right there. These are human beings. They're watching live. However they're watching it, they're live. So you have to remember that. Can't be like, all right, I'm just pre I'm pre-recording something for just someone on YouTube. You're speaking to a child. So what do we have to do? Focus on the camera, bring a lot of energy, which comes to Next card, the what I call the espresso spirit. More energy, more enthusiasm, um, and a little bit of a faster pace. Online, everything feels a little bit longer. Like, you know, if, if what feels like a 10 minute message to you offline might feel like 20 minutes or half an hour. So speed it up, speed it up. In terms of our goals for your message, we wanna make sure it's memorable. That includes making sure that there's a very clear point. Your whole message is built around one clear point. You're really weaving story into it and you have a visual. You need to have a visual. I'll tell you why in a moment. The clear point. Many, many messages that I've seen online have a general point, but then they're hitting all kinds of different things like, oh, we could do this or that or that happened, or here's maybe something um, or a story I'm reading. And for the children and adults, what were you saying? I remember sharing a message years ago, which I thought was fantastic and people were totally with it. And as people were leaving after that event, one gentleman said, Peter, that I, I loved your presentation, your style. Um, I was with you the whole time, but I don't think I could explain that to my family. Could you just like state it for me, like in a sentence? And I was like, be, 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 be. <laughs> We don't want to be like that. So can you write on an index card what your point is, takeaway point for that message? Start there, start there. Now next, we are wired for stories, the way our brains work. We want to like know like what's happening there. Are there, is there danger over there? Is there a, a problem? Our brains are designed to help us navigate the world, especially problems and challenges, overcome drama. So Whatever your message is, we need to make sure you include storytelling in it. I would say if you don't have a clear point, that's like index card written down, index card ready, and some story to tell related to it. A way to, through narrative and experience, tell people's story and offer some insight, we're not ready. Now, visuals. Visuals are critical for people of all ages. Uh, because once we have an image, it's easier for our brain to kind of like hang that message around it. So if 
if I tell a message about being stuck and how uh, often when we're stuck, you know, sometimes I mean, we might be able to rock and roll out of the situation, but with just a little bit of help, you know, we can, whatever, but it doesn't matter what the message is. But if I have this little turtle, which kind of looks like a, a hamburger, it was kind of, yeah, hamburger. Uh, kids love when you draw silly things that aren't really that great. So don't worry about your drawing ability. If I use, tell my story around this little fella here, and, and just even as simple as it is, use that in the context of my story about being stuck and asking for help or our being able to help each other when we're both stuck, just by sharing that we're that way, people are gonna remember that. Like 85% of the time, compared to if you have no image, like 10, 15%. Don't hold me to those stats, but that's a general idea. If your brain has an image, a month from now you're like, oh yeah, well, I'm feeling stuck. What was that thing about? And boom, you remember the, the turtle, the hamburger turtle or veggie burger turtle. Well, it's not the veggies. All right, next. You want your message to be actionable. What do I mean by that? We're sharing some kind of insight, understanding about life that helps the people move from dealing with the challenge to having some kind of progress on it. Maybe that's just having insight and understanding about the world around us, or maybe it's dealing with a specific problem and we're saying when this happens, you know, based on this story and this insight, we can do this. And so we're giving ch uh, children and others a really good sense of kind of like patterns that when you see this in the world or in your life, when you experience X, Y, or Z, these challenges that are all red squares for the challenge, that we can do these things. And over time, you know, just sharing these, that's going to really equip the people you're speaking to, to when they observe that in the world, to take action. In terms of storytelling and learning, we are really dialed into challenges, overcoming risks. So you want to make sure that whatever you're communicating about, that part of your present presentation includes a challenge, drama, um, a problem, conflict. So that we're always, there's always exceptions, but very much presenting. We have a challenge, laying that out through the story and other things you communicate, offering some insight, really being crystal clear about what the application is. And then when we implement that, when we actually apply the insight, what does that look like in the world? And we can share it like, this is what the vision is. When we do this, you know, like we're working towards justice in this way or we're um, show whatever, whatever the, the outcome is, we're communicating that. So challenge, insight, application, and that outcome and associated vision. Now, how do you do this? this that seems like a lot. I keep it very, very, very simple. Now, the way I always ground my messages is making sure that I communicate using what I call in my training with different leaders. I do a lot of video training, helping leaders communicate online, kind of showing up in people's feeds as community and other leaders. Um, I talk about three, strat three story strategy. And that means when I'm communicating to people on video, I'm talking about the person I'm talking to in the camera. That's you, all right, that's you. So I have to say the words you. Hey, it's good to see you. I'm glad you are here. Have you ever experienced this? So I'm talking in you terms, weaving that person's, grabbing that person's attention and weaving them into whatever it is I'm talking about, I'm bringing their story in. Well, that's in terms of speaking to them. I'm saying you, you, this is for you. So we're bringing in them. Next, I share personally about whatever it is. So if I'm talking about a message where it's like, the turtle and the whole stuck concept, I, I, where am I? I will share some experience, emotions, etc. my experience of being stuck. So I, like I, you know, once I was, 
you know, have you ever, have you ever experienced dot, 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 then sharing your own personal experience as the leader, the person delivering the message, you're sharing your I story, I this, I that. Now, what's the we? Well, as you raise a challenge, you might say, have you ever, have you ever seen someone who's struggling with this? I once, da, 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 there's my I story. Well, oh, throughout our lives, we, now we're talking at more of a societal or community level, we find ourselves in this situation where we, so we, I, you, and I'm just constantly weaving back and forth that language. I, I mean, I, you, and we. What does that do? You're bringing in your audience by speaking directly to them. There's research showing that when we hear the word you, we're like, huh, what? You're talking to me? We, we want that for you. I want you, as a person delivering a message, um, a value to people online, whatever the context, to speak to them. So we have to say that word, you. Now, in terms of a little bit of the structure and some other things to weave into your message. Online, if you're, whether your message is part of a bigger experience or is gonna be a standalone video clip shared on YouTube or elsewhere, you have to think about like, all right, hopefully uh, if you're putting together a great message for all ages, that's gonna be shared possibly as a standalone message through video somewhere. So it's not just only in a full worship service. So you have to think about how is it that or even if it isn't a full worship service, how is it that people interact with media? Well, if we don't grab people's attention lightning fast right now, forget it, they're, they're gone. Now, someone watching from home, a family, they might bring their child, um, have children of different ages participating in the experience that's happening. But if we get to the point for children, for all ages, and it's not engaging and it it's not interesting and as an adult you're like we're like what is this about oh come on i come i have my family here and it's like like please <laughs> deliver for me now so what we want to do in the first the very first few seconds of your message is hook people in where they know like oh this is what this is going to be about this is relevant this is interesting so we start with the hook, the hook. That's not through the fish hook, but to hook, capture their attention. It's important. If you can't capture their attention, all is lost in terms of communicating with that person. So we have to really prioritize, like, all right, in the first few seconds, capturing their attention. And the best way to do that is to take whatever it is, uh, that drama, the challenge, the thing, and in some way say, have you ever experienced this? Or have you been noted? Have you noticed? Have you noticed that this is happening? Or, oh, I have a story for you. I just saw and this was happening. Have you ever seen such a thing? So whatever it is, the person's like tuning to you like, wait, 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 what's going on? I need to know about this. All right. So the hook is really just in the very, if you think about your whole message, what's the thing that's at the core of it and just the very front of that message being like, have you ever, or like something so that the person listening, watching is like, oh, this is what this is about. And hopefully it's something that's relevant to their lives. Obviously we want your message to be relevant. Um, next. So as we're going through your message, we want to be sharing that I, you, and we language. Um, after the hook, I think it's important to have affirmation. So I am happy you're here. So very explicitly communicating, whether you're online, offline, watching the replay, I'm so glad you're here. Um, you know, and, and just being very intentional about saying those words clearly, like in your message, are you affirming the presence and participation? of of the people you're trying to engage with next i mentioned i you personally want to communicate i mean engage with the topic so that whatever i mean you could be telling a story maybe sometimes you may be uh telling retelling a classic story 
from some of like the world's wisdom teachings. Um, maybe you're referencing a book that you have permission to share. Uh, so even if you have a story that someone else created, you can still share a little bit of why you're interested in this. Sharing like, oh, have you ever, you know, share, like, kind of capture their attention? Uh, have you ever been stuck? And then I'm sharing like, I, you know, years ago, there's a time when, when I was, after I graduated from college, I felt so stuck. Uh, I'll tell you a little bit more about that in a minute. We're gonna, I'm gonna share a story though first from this book. But so you're bringing a little bit of your personal experience in, I think all the time, because that's how we build relationship. So, um, or it could just be your personal uh, enthusiasm about what you're going to explore in the core of your message. Oh, I'm so excited. So we've got the you, we've got the I. Now, the we, we wanna make sure that you kind of paint this picture of the issue that you're exploring. How is it that this relates to all of us? So sometimes you'll be exploring something that isn't relevant to everyone, but a lot of the times it's like you're dealing with something that's application in many people's lives children, adults, society at large, or you know, whatever the, the level is. So you, you want to be clear about saying like, we face this challenge, you know? And so there's like, we're moving from the you and I level to talking about the issue on kind of like this bigger we, you know, we, you know, as people, we all f have times when we get stuck. All right. And that just kind of makes it a little more broader, giving more entry places for people and talking at a level where we're not just talking about the viewer, not talking about your experience, but kind of bringing it out to this we level so that then we can tell some bigger, here's the next, you're getting to the core, you're sharing a story, teachings, whatever it is for your tradition, um, and whatever resources you're bringing into your message, whatever content you're bringing in, whether it's just stories from your life or some other experience that you're bringing in as a message or content, books, etc., cetera, um, classic teachings. Um, you've got the core. And so you're relating, telling the stories, bringing in the insights and applying that to the issue that we struggle with. Now, as you're going along, keep hitting I, we, and you language. Now that can be uh, sharing reactions. Like as I'm t going through a story, you can pause and like, what do you think of that? And so all of a sudden it's not just, they're just watching you read a story or tell a story. Um, but there's a sense of, this is increasingly important today, that you're engaging with the viewer, that child, a family, whomever on the other side of the camera, like they're live with you, even if it's re, uh, a recorded message, even if it's being watched on YouTube later on or whatever the platform that you're pausing. It's like, what do you think of that? No, obviously they, they may not be able to answer you because it's the replay, but they might be able to comment in the chat, comments, etc. cetera. Um, and for children, when, when people treat you, the viewer, even though you're watching something pre-recorded, as if you're there, like asking your opinion, like, what do you think of that? Have you ever experienced that? What do you think of this? Pause for a moment. What does that do? It makes a uh, space for you to think, reflect, to process what's going on. And it makes you feel like the person is actually there with you. You know you're watching a pre-recorded video, but the fact that they actually pause uh, makes it feel like you're there together. And so we want that. So um, as you're going through your message, pausing, having reactions like, ooh, I'm not sure what I think of that. What do you think of that? Can you imagine that happening? Boy, I wonder what would happen if um, that happened here, if all of us together, we experienced a, a whatever. Ah, you, we, just reactions as you go. Really bringing uh, your viewers into the, the helping them process what's happening uh, because you're modeling again you're modeling for them kind of some of the reactions you hope they might have what do you think of that I'm gonna ask those questions also because we're talking about online uh, messages 
depending on how you're sharing your message, there may be opportunities to ask children or families you know, with supervision to share responses in the chat, live content, fantastic, whether it's Zoom, other platforms, um, great to uh, make things interactive. Now, after you've gone through, uh, you know, here's kind of the core insight, teaching, wisdom um, of your message, and you say, when we face this, we have the opportunity to, or we can, whatever the um, insight is, whatever the lesson, the point, give them a specific challenge. A challenge, like a week this week, when you are faced with an opportunity to A or B, I want you to remember what we talked about today and consider doing B or you know, whatever it is appropriate to your message. So when you see this in the world or when you encounter that or when you feel or are thinking, whatever you've been talking about, you know, can you do this? I wanna challenge you to do that. So specific challenges, putting it in the form of a challenge really forces you as the person delivering the message to move it from conceptual to actionable, which is critical if it's going to help uh, all ages implement whatever your insight and teaching is in their lives. Now, very important, and often I've seen this missed, people deliver a great message, there's a great story, sometimes there's a point, but if we share with the people through our messages, what's going to happen when we all implement this insight, this teaching, this wisdom, what's the world gonna be like? What's the outcome? So that's vision casting. So we wanna say, you know, when we all, when we face our fears and do such and such, we have the opportunity to do whatever. We can work towards outcome. We can bring more love and justice into the world by doing whatever it is. So just make sure that this can only this could be a quick sentence. It could be a little bit more. It could relate to larger things happening in your community, your congregation. But that after you've delivered your specific message with this clear point and, and real um, instructions for implementing it, like do like an action, a challenge. Uh, you're saying you know when we do that, here is the outcome, and that's helping. And as you tie that into your your values as a community congregation. That's helping your audience, the children, families, others, to really understand how the teachings you're sharing, the insight, relates to your values and the work you're doing in the world. So we end up with a little you, the immediate hook. You know, have you ever imagined, considered, seen, whatever it is, Grab that attention in a matter of seconds, like one sentence. Connect with them. Bring your a little bit of your personal uh, personality, your experience, your enthusiasm to this subject. Make sure people know who you are. It's a good point. Um, I have a little hearts here because we want them to sense that you are glad they're there. So a little affirmation. What's the challenge we're facing? What's your core story, insight, teaching? What's it look in terms of like a real action from when we're dealing with this challenge, how do we move forward? What do we do? Make it concrete and share, you know, that you challenge. So when you, so here's what we think we can do when we face this, we can do that and why it's valuable. So when you encounter that this week, I want you to try and whatever the challenge is, then there's a vision casting and then closing. I affirmation i'm so glad to have spent this time with you we have the ability to do this together um i love hearing from you love your questions the drawings you're sending whatever you're doing um that that is a closing affirmation i think it's good to after you do your message and the challenge or specific action um to implement in our lives that we vision casting that you end with affirmation so that if, if, if people have been with you through that message, that you're able to once again, just really through looking into the camera, 
sharing how glad you are that they spent that time with you and that together we are working on this larger project of bringing your values into the world to like being a community together. Now, a few last things. You ready? Can you make it remarkable? I had some uh, leaders, minister, uh, assistant minister, minister to children, others in my congregation growing up who would do things that made me go, I don't believe they actually did that. They threw, con and also our director of religious education, all these people working together, they threw confetti off the balcony. I thought about that as a kid for years, doing some message about the, the nature of the Big Bang and the creation story and science and cosmic wonder and brought in whipped cream or shaving cream and so there's like toy dinosaurs and other things in a spaceship and whipping. I couldn't believe there's like this mess happening. They could have, that was pre-internet, but you could do that on a Zoom session. Um, and so think about what is going to take your viewers of this message live or recorded and move it from being this great message to something that's remarkable. Like I have to tell someone what happened. You wouldn't believe what Peter or so-and-so did in uh, the message today, the message for all ages. So what is it? How do we make it remarkable? Well, I think step one is to think about how, what would make it remarkable. Is there anything we can do? Um, I think uh, one of my favorites is adding mystery. If you're gonna be talking about doing something with a community garden, say, and you have a tomato to show, put it in a box so they can't see it and be like, listen, what do you think's in here? Put it in the chat, what do you think? Say we're live on Zoom. Boom, 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 Facebook Live, YouTube Live, pre-recorded, doesn't matter. Um, is it a baseball? No, it's a rock? No. I'll tell you, it's something that I grew. <gasps> chat, chat, chat. Anyway, but to have it in a little mystery, just, you can put almost, so how many little props can you put in a box? Open up. <gasps> All right, so mystery, huge. Especially, I taught preschool for years. That's how I got involved with children's television eventually. A little mystery goes a long way, friends. All right. <clears throat> Important, we want your messages to be relational. So if you're not just delivering insight, but trying to build a relationship, just remember, we're treating the, the camera like we're talking to a real live person. Asking questions, pausing, showing our interest, prompting them to take action and to maybe share in comments, whatever we can do to add interaction. But just remember that we're trying to advance a relationship and that means demonstrating care, listening, affirming okay i mentioned this a little bit before but emotion emotion is so important for children's messages online because if your flat your affect your emotional display is like instantly that's going to communicate to your viewers brains that this is not engaging uh, so whatever emotion you would hope your the people viewing that they would have, there's times you have to model that yourself. So you're reading a story or telling a story and then something happened that's surprising. You can go, oh, and then that, oh, or you know, frowning, just, you know, like we have to, if we're going to engage people online, we have to be willing to make facial expressions and be a little over the top in terms of modeling emotional response because our response, then like the viewer sees that and their brain's like, oh, we're in a stressful moment. <gasps> there's excitement. Oh, there's sad, there's nervousness, whatever the emotion is, are displaying it. Little acting uh, helps our viewer experience that. Props, if you can throw on a silly hat, a scarf, a shirt, um, have make a little simple magic wand, whatever is appropriate for your message, Doing that, even if it's just like a pencil with a little cutout star on it, 
um, something that doesn't look at all like the prop you need, but you're using um, some other thing in its place. Like um, you don't have a magic wand, but you you hold up a crescent wrench instead. It's kind of silly. Like, so you might say like, all right, imagine this is the magic wand. There's still something there for them to attend to, to focus on, and there's an extra laugh. Um, so that's important. Important note about collaboration. Um, we might not always have the opportunity to bring in, well, we can make it, but to bring in feedback, ideas, have communication back and forth between us and our children and families. But if we are continually mentioning that we love hearing from them, we love your ideas, your questions, sharing drawings, whether you know you can share them um, electronically or by mail or dropping them off, whatever's appropriate, no matter what happens in terms of people taking action on submitting content, being in dialogue, you're expressing interest in hearing from children, say, that communicates to them that you value their opinion, that you value their contribution. Um, and that ongoing affirmation, regardless of how many, uh, how many children say actually, send in a drawing or share an idea, just the fact that you're asking for it communicates in that moment that you value them. Last, pop culture, pop culture. If you can, with a little crisp there, I mean a little whack. Uh, if you can take something that's happening in the lives of, especially the online and media lives of children, you know, like today movies are like the, the stories they're growing up with. So if there's some big new movie, whether it's a Disney movie or a, the Star Wars Mandalorian or whatever it is, a new streaming whatever, if you can take some, knowing that, like, ooh, this new thing came out, all the kids are watching this probably, the, the top streaming things in the country, if you can take that and say, oh, have you seen, how many of you have seen the new whatever movie? No, I, I hear it's popular. I watched the trailer. Um, I saw there was a Yeti with magic powers or whatever. Um, today, we're talking about the exact same thing that that creature or that character was struggling with. Um, and then you relate it to like, your traditional, same old wisdom story you're all sharing, but you put it in the context of what they know, what they see in their environment, which makes it way more relevant. And so for them, that just makes what you're saying more meaningful. And then anytime they see that element in the world, oh, somebody mentions that movie. Oh, I see a poster. I see an ad. Oh, there's that thing in the... Um, in the store, a toy, a book, whatever. You've then taken the meaning that you're sharing, the insight, the wisdom, and attached it to that popular thing. So not only did you use the popular culture as an entry point and to pique interest and to make sure it make the kids feel like, families feel like, oh, this, this message is relevant to us. You're then attaching that insight, wisdom, and teaching to that pop thing so that whenever they see that pop thing in the world, that thing is helping to remind them of what you shared. So you get more mileage out of your message by attaching it to like, every time someone sees Baby Yoda, uh, Baby Yoda, they remember your message. Even if they haven't seen, they haven't watched that on uh, whatever platform, well, whenever they see that character out in the world, you've talked about something related. Whenever they see the other thing, the next movie, you've made meaning and shared insight and wisdom related to that. So they're constantly thinking about what you talk about. All right. That, my friends, is that. You did it. You made it to the end. Friends, I hope this was helpful. Um, I have an invitation to you related to answering your questions. So... I share a lot of related training and coaching for leaders, um, congregational leaders, nonprofit leaders, TV show hosts, comedians, um, do private coaching, training programs. Uh, but I haven't shared this content 
um, from messages for all ages specifically. So this is a little different video for me, um, responding to some of my colleagues. Um, and so it's really important to me that we are engaging our children, our families, uh, you know, those people in your community and someone who's worked with, um, in a congregational context, been a volunteer teacher, advised youth groups, led young adult groups, been, you know, a leader at all different levels. I'm married to a minister now. Like, I'm just like, I'm in the trenches. Um, and also working with children's television and, and children in other capacities. I really care about your success communicating with children and families, especially in this online context, delivering great messages uh, when we have to be online or when you choose to be online. There are lots of great reasons for sharing content online. So I want to invite you to share your questions with me and I'll make a follow-up video, um, especially if there are a bunch of them. Um, some questions I might answer just directly if they're short ones, but content that I think is going to be of service to all of you, I'll make a follow-up video. So go to my website. Where's the little thing? Right there, uh, peterboden.live. At the top, there's a contact link and a question box. So you can just use the question box form uh, to share your question, and then I'll use that um, to make a follow-up. All right, so thank you for all you do. And just know, um, if you have any related questions, but maybe not exactly in the context of what this video is about, share, uh, just share them. I'd love to hear from you. We can expand uh, this conversation a little bit. I'm happy to do that in the follow-up video. And also just knowing how can I be of support to you, your congregation, uh, the children, families, and others you serve. Um, I really want to know what you're struggling with so that I can share related content. All right. Thank you so much for all you do. I appreciate you. I'm, I'm glad you're um, taking the time to watch this. I hope it's helpful. Tell me what you think in a comment, the like. Let me know feedback. I'm talking all alone in my office. Does anybody care about this content? <laughs> no, let me know. What do you think? All right. Have a good day, a great week, and I'll talk to you soon.